Let's go back to verse 17 now. Uh, let's continue with verse 17. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. Okay, so remember, the last part of verse 16, Paul said, this stuff that I know, I did not confer with uh, mankind. Now he's being specific. Verse 17, I didn't even go to Jerusalem to the apostles before me. I didn't even get it from them. Look at that. But I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. This is why this is very important to understand. They're going to try to teach to you. Anti-dispensationalists are going to try to teach to you that Peter and the apostles, during those days, Peter and the apostles, they knew the gospel that Paul preached. They knew church age doctrine. Watch out for that. No, because Paul said, I didn't even confer with them. Yeah. There, that's proof there's a dispensation. There's a difference, okay? That's why when you read the apostles' writings, it makes more sense why, you would, uh, why it looks like there's a lot of works passages or things that would refer to Jews. But then remember, because there's this transition, right? That's why it makes sense. You would see why there's Christian doctrine. And then until Paul, it became very clear and full-fledged. And then once God uh, gave up the nation of Israel, temporarily he's going to go back to them but when he gave up them it makes sense why we're in the church and we should not include jewish things in here yeah. it makes sense right dispensationalism makes sense now okay verse 17 neither went i up to jerusalem to them which were apostles before me but i went into arabia so paul went to arabia to get his teaching and returned again unto damascus so now he went back to damascus so he was taught by, remember, verse 15, 16, God. Just him and God in the desert of Arabia. And uh, this is just a side note, but the Lord recently revealed to me it's so important where you have to separate yourself, just you and God. That's why Bible reading and prayer are so important. You know that? Bible reading and prayer is so important because you separate from yourself from every kind of ruckus out there. Temptation, sin, and yeah, even trials. Didn't you know that? It's a solace. It's a solace from trials and stress. Just be, just be alone, just you and God. And uh, I have a teaching called Quiet Place. I would recommend listening to that one. But it is recommended where you find your own solitary quiet place. So maybe it's your bedroom or some, uh, you want to make the room more nicer, peaceful with a uh, landscape. Or you want to drive out somewhere. You know, you want some alone time, right? All right. Some husbands un understands that. Amen. No, no, don't say amen. All right. Your wives are going to stone you to death. All right. But sometimes, uh, you know how uh, husbands would feel that like, oh, I need some alone time. You know, I need some man time. I need some man time. You know. So the thing is this. But deep down inside, it's not just men. Everybody, everybody needs some alone time. But when you have an alone time, you can never get it better with just you and God. You just talk to God. Just talk to him. You don't have to go through an orderly manner. Just talk to him. You don't have to start somewhere special or do a special Bible study. Just hear the Bible. That's it. Just do that. It's so relaxing. You need that kind of thing like Paul had. That's why if you, he, he went on for several years like that. God showed him many things, right? That's how God spoke to me. Is that uh, like the teaching you heard just a while ago. Is because it was just me and God. But sometimes you have to allow suffering where you can force yourself to be just you and God. Amen? Yeah. Amen? That'll be really good right there. So I recommend, please do that. Never skip Bible reading and prayer. And not only that, find a special time. And I just recently learned this. I need some me time. I need a me time. Everyone needs me time where it's just you and God. When you have your alone time, this is not a specific technique and method where you have to catch up Bible reading and prayer and make sure you cover all bases. That's not what it is. It's just you and God. That's it. All right? The Bible reading, prayer, and all those things, that is important. You got to do. Don't get me wrong about that. But I'm talking about a specifically a me time. You need that once in a while. And maybe you can mix that up with your routine of all the prayer lists that you have to do and the Bible reading you have to do. Maybe you have to mix up a little bit with that. But it's so important to specifically just have me time. Just no stress whatsoever. Don't think about anything else. Just I'm all by myself and just me and you, God. And observe his creation and talk to him. And then enjoy where you go where you're talking with Jesus. And then just hear the Bible on an audio or just look at the Bible when you sit on a beach or something like that. Just have that. Here's some preaching. Sometimes preaching can be used too, you know that? Because God is speaking to you through that. Yeah, now, obviously, you're going to get more from his word because this is solely all clean off from God. But sometimes a preacher can give you a, one of those nuggets from God that can help you. Amen? Amen. All right.
I don't know if that applied to anyone in here, but it can be very helpful. All right, verse 18. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem. Now look at that. He went three years alone with God, so he learned a lot from God. He learned a lot from God. After three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. So notice that uh, Paul, after he had alone time with God, he did not stop right there. He also went to Peter after that. Why? Because Peter walked and talked with Jesus Christ. So then he wanted to get from his experience as well, Peter. So then he talked with him 15 days. So by talking to Peter 15 days, he can actually get firsthand experience about, man, ain't this a blessing I can preach right here, but I got to close. Can you imagine when Paul went to Peter and he said, what was it like, Peter, you know, sitting at the feet of Jesus? Yeah. What was it like when you let him down and Jesus Christ just keep lifting you up? What was it like when Jesus rebuked you for your mistake, but that he loved you enough to die for you and still carry you through? What was it like, Peter, to be corrected by God? And not only that, imagine the embarrassing moments where Paul said, what was it like, Peter, to deny Jesus? What was it like, you know, when you went ahead of God and then out of that uh, rushed, critical attitude, you just took out a sword and then cut off the person's ear because that person, he's taking away my Lord. How did that feel? How did it feel, Peter, when uh, you were going through the pressure? And then sometimes Peter will have to give in shame the embarrassing things that he went through. So the thing is, is Peter, imagine this is so, such an amazing experience, is literally you're walking and talking with Jesus, but you see not that much of a difference between a pastor and a regular member as well, a disciple. That's why it makes sense why pastors are called shepherd and Jesus Christ is called the chief shepherd. When I see, I'm going to preach that actually Sunday more and more, but the more that I get closer to the ministry, the more I look at Jesus' ministry. When I look at Jesus' ministry, it's even more helpful. It's so much more helpful to me in my life. 